Hello everyone, today we're going to uh, continue the subject of uh, debunking anti-communism. The, the special subject will be incentive and our communism. With that, I'll turn the subject to my grandson, Tristan. Go ahead, Tristan. All right, thank you. So as my grandfather just said, today we're going to be continuing our series on debunking anti-communist arguments. Specifically, the argument that we're going to be addressing today is the argument that because communist, communist society is a society without money, then there is no incentive for anybody to work under communism because obviously, you know, with no money, what are you going to pay them? You know, there's no incentive to work because of the lack of money to pay people to work. Now, uh, this argument, in my opinion, is kind of flawed, and this is the reason why. Now, communist society does refer to a society without money, yes, but you kind of have to draw a distinction between money and currency. You see, money is, does, it's not the same thing as currency, right? Money is kind of just like generalized currency. Money is just currency that is generalized, that, you know, it's a general thing, you know, it's not speci specified depending on, you know, what labor you uh, do or commit yourself to. It's just, you know, a uh, benchmark, you know, it's kind of a benchmark currency that everybody gets paid, you know, depending on uh, subject value, right? Now, this doesn't refer to all types of currency. Currency is just like, you know, something that you exchange for, an, for a product, right? So you can obviously see that money and currency here aren't the same thing. So I'd argue that even if you couldn't pay someone money under communist society, you could still some, pay somebody a form of currency. And specifically, that currency would be, uh, it would come in the form of labor vouchers. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the concept of labor vouchers, I'll explain it really quick. Basically, labor vouchers are kind of a specified version of currency, right? So a labor voucher would specifically refer to, um, it, would, it would have a specific value depending on what kind of work you commit yourself to, right? And that value would be um, specifically based upon the use value of your labor, right? So from this, you get a um, bill or a dollar um, that has a certain value that is drawn from the use value of your labor that you can use. And it's, you know, very specific, you know, because it depends on the use value of your labor and what labor it is, right? So it's kind of different for money in the sense that it's not generalized, but it's very specific to what you do. And then you can use this to exchange for products. So you can kind of see here that money isn't the only, you know, isn't the only uh, type of currency you also have labor vouchers as an alternative. So abolishing money wouldn't necessarily mean abolishing currency because there are different types of currency. Now I want to talk about real quick, um, you know, th this would specifically work under the uh, lower phase of communism, but what about the higher phase of communism, which is full stage communist society? Now this is very interesting because Marx specifically said that there would be, you know, no kind of currency under this society. There wouldn't be labor vouchers or anything like that, right? Now, um, full-stage communist society, I would argue that you wouldn't really need an incentive to work because by this point, you know, a lot of stuff would have been automated. So, for example, you wouldn't need somebody, uh, you wouldn't need, like, sewer cleaners, for example, because, you know, by that point it would have been automated, right, because of uh, communist developments. And this is an argument used a lot by uh, communists and Marxists that in the higher stage of communism, society would have progressed so much to the point where you wouldn't really need workers for menial tasks, such as, you know, like, um, you know, street cleaning or, you know, stuff like that. And as for higher stage tasks, that can be planned by, like, you know, AI and stuff like that, which would have been developed, you know, in communist society, which is, of course, you know, hundreds of years in the future. And that would <laughs> essentially wrap up the subject and the video as a whole. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.